All right, in 6.2, uh, this is just a quick summary of 6.2. Remember yesterday, guys, we did this activity where we drew two parallel lines and we drew two perpendicular lines. And what we were to do is to compare the slopes of those lines. We filled in this little chart here. And I have uh, this diagram right here. So let's just review what we figured out yesterday. First of all, this line and this line are called what? What's the relationship there? They are parallel. Okay, very good. Now the slope of this line, all right, if we took two points, and let's say this is a point right here, and this is a point right there. So this one is one, and then one, two, three, four. One, four, and this one is what? What's the coordinate of this point? Yeah, negative one, zero, okay? You all should see that real quickly right away, okay? And to find the slope of that line, the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So in this case, real quickly, it'd be 4 minus 0 over 1 minus negative 1. So that's 4 over 2, or a slope of positive 2. Everyone see that? That's what you did yesterday. Now if we did the same thing to this other parallel line right here, and we took any two points, we would find that in this case the slope is, and I'll do the uh, rise over run method here now. So we do one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. That's up to get to this next point. Then we go one, two, three spaces over. So rise divided by run equals two. So we came up with the rule yesterday that parallel lines are equal, right? And I erased that from, from the board here, but parallel lines have equal slopes, okay? And perpendicular lines, well, if we take a look at this first line here, so this one here and one of these other ones that form a 90 degree angle like this, those are perpendicular. We have the slope of this first one already, and so the second one, what we did was we took the slope of the second one, you can pick any two points there, this one is down 1, 2, so that's negative 2, and then a positive run of 2, 3, 4. And so this is negative 1 half. Okay, everyone agree with that? So what we came up with yesterday is that perpendicular lines, so lines that form a 90 degree, their slopes are related in that 1 is the negative reciprocal of the other one. So if one is two, so this is a slope of two, oops, slope of two right here, a perpendicular line would be the opposite sign, so negative, and then one over two. And that's the negative reciprocal. Okay? So here's again a little bit of what we did yesterday, some examples of negative reciprocals right here. And of course this was your assignment. Now did anybody have any questions from the assignment or from the lesson yesterday that I can help you with right now, or was that pretty straightforward? Okay, so the big thing from uh, 6.2 then was the slopes of parallel lines are equal, slopes of perpendicular lines are negative reciprocals. I have one question before I let this, uh, let this screen go here. <coughs> can you tell me what the x-intercept is for this line right here? For this line right here, what is the x intercept. Where is it? What is it? 4. Okay. So on the x axis, 1, 2, 3, 4 is where the graph intercepts. That is absolutely correct. As a point, you'd say 4, 0. Good. That's the x intercept. What about the y intercept? What's the y intercept? 1, 2 is where it hits the y intercept. Yeah. And so that point would be 0, 2. So we said here, this has a slope of negative one half, right, and has a y-intercept of two. Guess what the equation for this line is in slope um, intercept form, in this form. Anybody have any guesses? Anybody guess what an equation, I mean, you, you shouldn't know this yet, really, but anybody have any guesses what the equation for this line might be, given this information that I've kind of uh, talked about here? Remember, y equals mx plus b. Any guesses? None? Okay. 
Well, I'm not going to give it away. We'll come back. Once you get this figured out, we'll come back and you'll be able to do this in a few minutes. All right, so today the graphing activity is this. We're going to fill out these two charts. And I'm going to start you off with this. The value of M here, and that is the slope of this line, is 1. You're going to, you're going to graph it on your calculator. You're going to fill out this chart. So let's get back to the calculators real quick. Get your calculator out. Okay, turn your calculator on. And you're going to hit this button right here. You see this button right here, Y equals? Push that button, and you should have a screen that shows up, something like this. Now, if you have anything typed in there, just clear it off. So just kind of use your cursor to go down to the line that has something typed in and clear it off so the screen looks like this. Okay, does everyone calculators look like that? Yes? Okay, okay turn it on, hit Y equals. All right, now notice there's a whole bunch of Ys here, but we're going to use one at a time. And this is Y equals, and over here, Y equals X plus 2. Now, X is the input variable, right? So on your calculator, do you see this button right here? It says X comma T comma theta comma N. This is the input variable button. All right? So there you have Y and you have X. And then you're going to hit plus 2. And now you're telling the calculator, hey, I want you to graph Y equals X plus 2. After that, you hit graph. Now, your axes might not look exactly like this, so I want everyone to hit zoom, the zoom button, and then number 6. And then everyone will have the same looking uh, axes. Okay, everybody's uh, graph look like that? Yeah? Okay, so there you go. You just graphed a line in the graphic calculator. Pretty easy, right? Y, here's the Y button. X is this one right here. Now, here's a, here's a, a hint, okay? Very important. Um, the negative sign is down here in the white buttons, and the subtraction or minus sign is here. You can't mix those up. If you want a minus something, you have to hit this button. If you have just a negative number, then use this button, okay? So that, if your calculator says error and you can't figure it out, maybe that's something that you've done because that has happened lots before. All right, so let me just walk you through the first graph here. So we're going to sketch the graph, okay? So I guess the big thing is, um, and again, you should hopefully have enough space. This is going to be pretty small for you. But the graph kind of looks like this, right? You don't have to label the graph, um, well, I want you to label intercepts, I guess, okay? So we're going to have uh, intercepts listed over here, but you should have in this graph here, what does it pass through? Can you see what it passes through? Y equals, yeah, it is, it's Y equals 2, actually. And how can you check if, if you can't see that? Well, you do this. Um, you see this little um, uh, calculate button there? It's a trace there, but it says calc on top. Hit second function trace, which is the calc, and it'll say calculate. And number one is value, so you hit enter. It'll go back to this graph screen, and it'll be a blinking cursor with x. If I want to check the y-intercept, what does x always equal in the y-intercept? Zero, right? So you hit zero, then you hit enter, and it'll immediately show you the y value that's associated with x equals 0. And well, it is recording, so you can watch the video again. And plus, you're going to do this about 100 times. Okay, so There's a little, kind of a little loading symbol flashing through here. You'll be okay. Don't worry, we'll do this lots of times, okay? And like I say, you can go back and watch this super exciting video. So super exciting. This is the first time you've ever learned anything in school. Okay. Oh, wow. I just learned something. My notes just disappeared. Let's see if I can get them back. All right. So what's the slope of this graph? What's the slope of the graph? Hmm. Okay. Let's go back to the graph. Now, if you can't see this very well, like if you're like trying to count, uh, oh, goodness. Well, you know the intercepts, I guess. 
right? And it might be easier to fill those out right away. So the intercept here, y-intercept is 0, 2. Okay? I prefer you to put it as a point. Um, at this Right now, I'll accept if you just put 2. But you should write it as a point because that's something you have to get used to anyways. What is the uh, x-intercept here? Well, close. Negative 2. So the x-intercept is uh, negative 2. So, uh, sorry, negative 2, 0. So negative 2, 0. Okay? So if you wanted to, you could calculate the slope, I guess, pretty quick from those two points. 2 minus 0 over 0 minus negative 2. Anybody, get, anybody know the slope then? Let's go back to the graph. Uh, one, thank you. It's a rise of two and a run of two. See that? Rise of two. So from this point, you go up two and you go over two. So the slope is one. Does that make sense? Got it? Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you now to have, um, I want you to write three other slopes. At least one of them has to be negative. So my suggestion would now be change m to 2, and I'll show you how to do that. This is going to be now y equals negative 2x plus 2. Okay, so again, this is the format, and m is going to be the slope. Now, I've told you this ahead of time. I told you this last chapter. The textbook doesn't think you know this, okay? The textbook introduces this, I think, next section. So you guys already know this. So you should. this should be pretty easy, but I want you to confirm with the graphing that this is making sense to you. All right? So let's graph this one. Y equals... Well, there's a clear button right there. Okay? No, you just you move it over to here so that it's blinking there, and you hit clear. Okay, so again, you hit your Y equals button right here. And then you hit the clear, or you could delete. You could, but clear would be easier. Okay, don't don't punch the buttons. That, that's not going to help. Is it not working? Oh, it worked. Okay. Okay. Take it one step at a time. Now, we're typing in this equation, guys, right? So is this a minus or a negative, do you think? It's a negative. So we use this button right here. There's nothing in front of it, so it's got to be a negative. If there was x minus 2, then that's a minus. If it's just negative 2 at the beginning, then you use this negative sign. So negative 2, x, right there, plus 2. And you can graph that one. Ooh. So that one looks a little bit different, doesn't it? Now, if you want to compare any of these to the original one that we did, you could just leave this one on the screen, which uh, I might I'm, I might show you, but this is your graph right here. If you want to zoom in, there's another piece of information for you. If you want to zoom in, you see this zoom button? You push that. And you see where zoom in is? Scroll down there or just punch number two. And then you hit enter, and it'll automatically zoom in for you. So the only problem with this is that sometimes it'll zoom in too much and you can't see everything you need to see. But for this one, you can easily see the y-intercept and the x-intercept, right? Okay. Again, not sure why this is doing this, but... So, the sketch of the graph is going to look like this, and your line is going to be going down here. And this is going to be y equals 2. And what's the x-intercept here? 1. Good. So this one was 2 and negative 2. So what's the slope of this graph? What's the slope of this line? Well, from this point here, the y-intercept to the x-intercept, you go 1, 2 down, so that's negative 2, divided by the run of 1. So what's the slope? 
negative 2 over 1 or a negative 2. Okay, so what's the x-intercept? We said it was 1, 0, and the y-intercept 0, 2. Okay, so take a few minutes and you do two more equations on your own. Pick different values of m and, uh, and fill in this chart and then answer this question, okay? So take about five minutes and, and do that. So what we find from these two charts, from this activity, we're coming up with, really, we're confirming this as the slope y-intercept form. And we're finding that when we change m, change the values of m, that changes the slope of the graph here. So this graph has a slope of 1. This one has a slope of negative 2. This graph has a slope of 3. So m is indeed the slope of the graph. The b value, that's this value right here at the end, and here as well, those b values are the y-intercept. So what we find when you fill out this chart is that changing the b value changes the y-intercept. So quickly, the graph um, of this one would have the exact same slope as this above one, but it would intercept the graph at negative 1. This one would intercept the graph at 0. And this one here, same slope as all the other ones, but would intercept the graph at positive 2. Right there. Okay? So, when we summarize this, changing the value of b, it changes where the graph intercepts the y-axis. Okay? b is the intercept. How could you describe the appearance of any graph in this form? Well, it's a straight line. We know that because uh, it's a linear function. It has the slope equal to m, and it has a y-intercept equal to b. Here's your assignment from the uh, text, and we'll be having a, a quiz if you missed this class here today. We'll be having a quiz coming up. And uh, yeah, that is uh, the activity for 6.3, talking about uh, just kind of exploring with the graphing calculator. We talked about the graphing calculator there as well um, and, uh, and how we're able to graph using the Y equals button, uh, graph uh, any line.